All right, let's keep moving along, shall we? As I mentioned, module two is a big one and it's got a lot of tools for us to activate. So I hope you're ready to roll. We're going to be working through our workbooks as well. So pen to paper, then into our digital tool space of our Trello boards, as well as a Google Sheet, if you like spreadsheets. All right, so what we're talking about here is the posts and all the things that go into them maybe as complicated or simple as you want to make it. And then the process for actually getting it done, which as I mentioned at the outset is a huge focus of us now uh, for us now in this course, because if we don't actually commit to something and lay it out in advance of what it's going to take, we can do all the planning in the world, but it doesn't really matter. So we're going to be looking at platforms, pillars, and categories, building on those pillars that we identified in course number one to map out our content themes, as well as those the really unique categories and, and platforms and spaces that we want to show up for the right reasons. Then the keystone content plan. This goes deep into our content formula as um, sort of these springboard uh, weekly topics that we like to call our keystone pillar topics that can help, again, map out or, or uh, help the rest of our content just seamlessly come to life. Weekly and quarterly plans. So now we're taking our social media marketing plan from top to bottom and we're actually putting it into these planning and automation um, tools, including some of the top software that we would love to show you and we're going to hopefully get you to consider using if you haven't been using anything yet. Uh, what makes a perfect post? How can we look at the uh, punchy headlines and hooks and kind of hashtags or different types of trending topic search terms that we can utilize in our content to make it really land or get found? And then a social style guide. So what do you need to be doing in your own business that again, clearly indicates who you are and what you do without having to think twice? And then a few campaign springboards at the end. How can we think up some of these above and beyond topics that we can insert into our day-to-day -day content that make it bump up a notch. And maybe those are quarterly, maybe it's once a year, maybe every single month you've got a little mini campaign going on that just adds some variation and interest to your content. All right, so what it comes down to here is editorial planning. We're gonna put on our like newspaper editor hat or our magazine journalist or uh, editor um, you know, role and lay out stuff that's gonna be super compelling for people to come back and stick around for and you know, wait for every time we write a new newsletter or publish a new blog post. First, we've talked about this, but the, the number one step is who are we speaking to? From the audience personas that we're building and that we're, we know we're crafting our content for, we've identified the key geographics, sort of those cold surface level factors that we have to know and we have to target our audience with in new markets, with new products, when we're just starting out. We don't have those existing clients or hot leads uh, with the psychographic or deeper emotional factors yet, we got to start somewhere. We're stabbing in the dark. And those are generally those geographic um, factors that are, you know, age, gender, location, and then a little bit of int interest and behaviors. So those are when we get into occupation, um, education, just basically what they're interested in, why, and what makes them a little bit more of a deeper audience persona for us than just, you know, 45 year old female who likes to drink wine and lives in Manitoba. And then those psychographic factors, those hot lead type things where we know their behaviors. What are they clicking on? What content have they engaged with? When were they last on our website? Um, what did they leave in their cart and not check out with? Now those are psychographics as well as the sort of fears, desires, um, frustrations that make our content even better. Next, what do we need to convey to them? So we know all that, but how do we actually say the right thing? Well, if we use some of the tools that we're talking about in a minute here, we're gonna be that much closer. Also knowing our sales and marketing themes for the year is a really key piece to this because it allows us to shape our content and create some curiosity and delight and you know um, a reason for people to come back for more if we've got something to anchor our content into each month or each quarter. This could be our campaigns or it could just be a monthly theme. It's up to you. So that is the 12 month planning that we laid the groundwork for in the last course and we're building on now. These milestones, events, and dates that matter to both our business, sort of those sales focused events or um, deadlines, and then our customers, the marketing and promotional 
uh, notable dates, events, and happenings in the year ahead. So some ideas there for you of what might go into each of those two things. And then, as I mentioned, if you want to refer back to the social media strategy exercise number eight, and you haven't already started to earmark some themes for each month, this is a good time to do so. We're going to be building on these in our content planning kits here in a minute. But I also mentioned this spreadsheet. If this is more your beat, then by all means, we encourage you to click on this link here and it's going to take you to this beautiful little spreadsheet. Well, I think it's a beauty, but um, it is helpful in that you're going to lay out, first of all, adjust the dates for whatever year you're making this for. Um, and really it's kind of a Gantt chart. If you know Gantt charts, it's like filling in the cell and you can use different colors or X marks the week if you want. But what are those five to 10 major events, milestones, happenings for you? And then what are your key tactics? So where you see there's PR, there's website and SEO, there's your social platforms, maybe there's blog, e-newsletter, podcast, video marketing, whatever your big uh, marketing platforms or tactics are for that time frame, probably the year ahead, plot out the biggest to-dos you've got there. You don't need to put in post to Facebook because you'd have an X in every single week, but big quarterly, you know, revisions of your about statements or a press release that goes out every three months or according to when your big events are happening. So the idea is that we start to ladder up our more, our marketing events to our sales or company operational happenings. And we see where we've got some gaps or we build the work back schedule. For example, if I know that I've got a big trade show happening in February, and it's uh, actually, let's call it March, early March. I know that according to my legend, I can make it whatever I want to. I'm going to be starting to do press. Uh, actually, you know what? Probably out here announcing that exact thing or I'm building the press kit, etc. And then maybe I'm doing the outreach here. So you can build this however you like. Um, but it is really important to have a high level 30,000 foot view, as they say, of your year ahead. And then you can get more granular with your content. Um, there's so many other, you know, planning tools and spreadsheets we could use, but this one can be a really nice, um, dynamic spreadsheet that lives in Google drive, uh, that you can easily update with your team and refer back to for the high level stuff. All right. So back to, um, the, the tool you've got that for your use if you want, and you can download your free copy there and then just head up to file, say copy, and then save it as your own. You will not be able to edit our copy. That is the template. We don't want everybody plugging in their own events to our master sheet. You have to make a copy and save it as your own. Okay. So the bigger question then is how do we bring it all to life? Given that I'm talking a lot about process and the scheduling and automation, but also just the simply weekly and monthly process that you commit to, to make it happen. So the foundation of our content formula and the process that we call the nicer method of content creation. So the keystone content formula is how we build out our content. And then the nicer method, which you'll learn about in a minute is how we work a month in advance. And we do a little each week to bring it to life. So when we're talking about our content formula, I've talked about the keystone pillar content. It's, it's both. It's keystone content, it's pillar content, but it's that big piece of content that sits at the top. You know, the keystone of the arch. It basically holds the ship together for that particular week or maybe month, but we're going to call it a week. And if you write one great piece of that keystone pillar content, so it's based in your pillars, it speaks to whatever message you need to get across, the other content for that week can trickle down from there. So that might be a meaningful blog post, or it could be a video, or it could be an e-newsletter, but it's probably not just a Facebook post. Maybe it is, maybe it's a LinkedIn article or an Instagram reel, but you have to decide what that keystone piece of content is going to be each week. And then we're going to put it into our keystone content topic generator. From there, the tier two is supporting content. So if my tier one is a blog or a video, my tier two might be an e-newsletter and um, some social videos or social posts. And my tier three is going to be the supplementary stuff. We like to say tier one is our blog, 
Tier two is a few Instagram reels and videos, and tier three is all of our social content. So if we do a good job on tier one, tier three writes itself because we pull apart that blog and we now have at least half of our social content for the month. That is our pillar content. Then what we do is we supplement it with some filler content. So those are the other pieces of content that of course we can generate. They could be evergreen, they could be on the fly, but the pillar content has filled our mandate and given us a rich topic for the week that we can springboard off of and get some you know, deeper content onto the internet <laughs> and associated with ourselves and our brand. The filler is just that. So Keystone 101. Establish your content's fundamental, your key content's fundamental features, value proposition, and target audience persona. And then exercise eight is the plan. So declaring your goals, time commitment, and publishing or posting frequency. These are both very tactical, but very important. So let's look at that exercise seven. Overview of our and target audience of our crazy effective Keystone tier one content. The type of Keystone content I will create is... What do you want your, your main piece to be each week? Could you commit to a blog? Remember, it doesn't have to be 5,000 words. It could be three paragraphs, but that it's gonna serve as a really rich piece of content that's great for your SEO. It provides tons of social fodder for you to direct people to your blog or your website with, amen, um, and that lives on and, and you, can, you can grow on it and add to it from there. Or maybe it's video if you feel like that's a better space to be. I've seen a lot of people create a YouTube video as their keystone content or an Instagram live or even an Instagram reel. They pull it into one of the tools that we love to teach like rev.com or um, any of the other kind of uh, transcription tools. Another great one is Capwing with a K. And then they transcribe that video and now they have tier two as a blog. There, I spoke for a bit about whatever my pillar topic is for the, or my keystone topic is for the week. And, uh, and then I took that 20 minute video, transcribed it through AI. Thank you, Capwing. Thank you, Rev.com. I also captioned it for when I posted it as a tier three piece of social content or other repurposed content. But I was able to pull that transcription and post it as a blog or any newsletter as well. So now we've got this trickle down effect of repurposed content. Number two, the subject matter it will cover includes. Well, this could be general or this could be related to your pillars. Number three, the audience you're creating it for can be summed up as what? Remember, one specific person who has what pain point and needs what from you. My target audience, if clearly defined as one singular persona, persona is. Their top three pain points are. Three ways I can help them solve this are and then three things my target persona desperately desires or wants to feel. Hopefully this will all guide you towards more effective Keystone Tier 1 content creation. Now it's time to lay down our commitment. Are you ready? This is going to be very helpful in your planning tool in a minute. So for your highly strategic Tier 1, 2, and 3 content, let's lay some goals. For the following time frame, are you going to commit to 3 months, 6 months, 12 months? I wholeheartedly commit to X number of tier one pieces per month. I would suggest four if you can swing it, and I'm gonna show you how to batch create them so you create four tight and bright keystone content pieces at a time each month in one week. Of approximately what length? So number of minutes or number of words for that piece. And then the number of tier two and three pieces that will be pulled from each of those. Is it you create a blog and you may turn that into two e-newsletters, or you create a video and you turn it into three blogs, and then what about 20 social posts? How can you do this? You're gonna to start to see as you actually create it what kind of little snippets and sound bites you can pull from a video or pull from a blog, but take a stab at it for now. For an annual total of how many pieces of tier one posts? Hopefully 52 <laughs> or 12. If you can only do one a month, no problem. But if you do it well and make it dead easy on yourself with that batch creation method and, and laying out your topics in advance, I promise you, you could do one a week. So they're going to be published every what? Day and time. Well, Monday morning, 8 a.m. it goes live because I finished it four weeks prior. So it's just scheduled and it, it rolls out beautifully thanks to the nicer method. The top three goals for your content strategy in the next 12 months are, and the top three ways you're going to measure your success are what? 
Is it just straight up consistency? Honestly, if you can commit to this and build on everything, you're going to learn so much. You're going to absolutely make inroads in the, obviously the amount of content that you have out there, but the ability for other people to share it and engage with it and for you to see what's working so that you can build on the kind of content that's really resonating, add to it, iterate from it, find, you know, other ways to replicate it, et cetera. All right. I encourage you to push pause and flesh those out. And then we'll continue on talking about platforms and posts. Okay. So we did look at our content pillars in course one, as I mentioned, and we want to absolutely have our content categories nailed as well. These are those little sub categories that allow, that add interest and variety and readability. You know, you take that interesting educational piece and you make it a how to, or a did you know, or a Q and a, or a ask me anything. And it becomes really, um, consumable <laughs> if we, if we mix things up. From there now, we're going to be brainstorming our 52 can't miss keystone content topics to guide us through the year. And if you remember in course one, I said, if you have four pillars, all you need is 13 easy peasy topics in each one of those pillars. And we have some leading questions to pull topic ideas out of you. But if you don't have um, that much to begin with, start with six or seven topics that could fit into each of those four pillars and you'll have six months worth of content. But four topics times 13 keystone topic ideas equals 52 weeks of content. So we'll be dumping all those ideas into our content bank, which you're going to see in this module. So those content and pillar categories, as a refresher, these are the distinct themes of our storytelling. And a go-to fallback, if you don't have distinct ones, are educate, inspire, and entertain. And your fourth pillar might be promotional, which... Ideally, we don't want to make it too salesy, but maybe that could stand alone. Or is it community, advocacy, people, partners, whatever makes sense for your business. And don't be afraid, remember, if you have to, to make your pillars product-based. If you really are, you know, a, a product-based company or a service-based company that is that is not able to make them more kind of emotionally um, based, be, feel free to make it product A, product B, C, and D, which are your pillars. And then you can get more emotional or a kind of deeper connection once you're within those pillars. And then some content categories idea, category ideas, just to further remind you, which you are of course adding into the workbook from course number one, or just jotting down so that you can translate them into your Trello planning board here pretty soon. Okay, so we've talked about the keystone content, aka the weekly pillar topics that relate to our content pillars, and the idea that it's a formula for 52 weeks of content creation. This is, you hear us talk about the content formula? This is literally it, plus a few other things. So if we can multi-purpose and repurpose our content, we're going to get so much further ahead than constantly writing new stuff and different stuff for our blog versus our video versus our social feeds, etc. We can really hang our hat on one deep, well thought out idea and then talk about it for an entire week or month, but ideally the week. And that's going to be some rich, deeper authority building content than probably just constantly randomly posting whatever within your pillars. If you can really hang your hat on that, on that one singular idea for the week and maybe make 50% of your content pillar based from that topic and 50% filler, you're going to have some um, great stuff to talk about. Now, if you think about it in terms of, um, you know, whatever that looks like, let me just move my head here. You might have a blog post that, or sorry, on the left here, you've got an e-newsletter, which then, so that would be your tier one. And then it gets repurposed into a Facebook, a LinkedIn and Twitter post, as well as a bunch of Instagram feed stories, um, feeds and stories. So if I wanted to say, I just have tier one and tier two, that's totally fine. Maybe I've created something a little deeper, like a free download. That's my, my, my keystone content this month or this week is an ebook or a, you know, a freebie that someone can download off my homepage. And then from there, of course, I have additional social posts to pull out of that freebie. So repurposing takes all shapes and it is absolutely necessary if we're going to maintain our sanity. 
content it moves so quickly and it's so disposable in a lot of ways and if we can make it more meaningful and tied back to the main idea of the week and send people there now we're doing our job so your job is to go back into your workbook and the, there's a bonus sheet in there if you need space to uh, remind yourself or to develop from scratch the content uh, pillars and categories and then let's start to think about these keystone topics. So we're gonna start with 18 post ideas with those leading questions I mentioned, and then have a bit of a post bank that we can start dumping them into. And of course, this will turn digital very soon, but we're still in the pen to paper mindset to make sure that we're on track. So there's your content pillars and categories. And then from here, let's talk about some ideas. So what are three questions that you're asked about the most often as it relates to your work? And do these fit into the educational pillar, perhaps? Or maybe one is educate and one is inspire. Uh, what are three misconceptions about your company or your industry that you'd love to clear up? Myth busting goes a long way, as we know, and this might be your chance. And trust me, people don't know that information about your industry, and they'd love to know that. Don't underestimate how little we know. Uh, when people work with me or us, they are most delighted to learn what? How can you say that in a clever way? How can you use some of those unique categories to make this an actual interesting piece of content? Three things I could talk about for days without ever getting bored. Hmm, interesting. That could be a how-to, a did you know, and ask me anything. You could make it a Q&A with one of your past customers. Um, three little known facts about me, my company, or my industry. So those go back to the key messages we worked on in course number one. What do we absolutely need to know about your business that we may be overlooking and you're forgetting to tell us? Uh, three things that I or we are absolutely the best at in our field or in this crowded market or in our city. Find a way to say those in a modest, you know, but also really compelling way. And then finally, exercise 10 is that post idea bank. So if you're struggling to have come up with, you know, topics in exercise nine, or you're just ready to dump ideas into this post idea bank and you like this format better, great. Put your pillars at the top. Maybe you have four, maybe you have three. And then those categories down the left. So let's say that my pillars are educate, entertain, inspire, and my categories that I really want to focus on if I go back up here are how to's, did you know's, questions, or Q and A's, testimonials, and behind the scenes. I love those ideas. So I'm going to put those up the side in my categories and I'm going to have an educational how to. So how to turn your Instagram feed into something people actually want to read. My next one is entertain and my category down here, if I was to land on this square, will be um, inspire and it's going to be an ask me anything. And it's gonna be how we got started in online courses, or something like that. Um, and it might then, if I further flesh that out into what type of content, it's gonna be a video or it's gonna be a, you know, a podcast or whatever. But if it's all my keystone content, I don't even need to worry about that because I know my keystone content is a blog. I hope I haven't lost you. Please, let's keep going. I don't want you to uh, feel totally overwhelmed, but just know that this is all building on each other. Take what you can from it. Use your workbook tools or start to think about some of the digital tools we're gonna present, but just know it's all a work in progress and whatever you can take from it and jump with is, uh, is perfect. Okay, the final piece of this, of course, is the process before I show you the, the tool. So, if we think about how to keep content marketing from taking over our life, because as we know, once we start to bring together these rich content ideas and then the smaller bits that come off of them and then the editing and the graphics that go with it and the photos and the publishing, it can be a lot, especially if we're doing it every single day, one post at a time. So we have developed what we like to call the NICER method and the acronym is NAME, ideate, create, edit, and repeat. There's a few more things in the R, but bear with me. So if we were to do this weekly, what it might look like is that on Mondays, we plan and draft and schedule out the written or the, the keystone content. Tuesday, we would shoot live video or, or write that bigger piece. Wednesday, perhaps we edit, schedule, and pre-boost all the content for the week ahead. And then Thursday to Wednesday, we roll out that scheduled content and repeat it. So that would be making everything happen on a Monday, Tuesday, and a Wednesday, one week at a time. 
which is a lot. I'm taking one of those ki those keystone topic ideas, turning it into my tier one content, editing it, repurposing it, publishing it, and then doing it all again the week after. Some people like this. They like to work in a shorter kind of batch uh, way, but we prefer the month in advance where we batch together four weeks of content. So operating one, one month in advance means that if I'm creating content for March, I am working throughout February to bring it to life so that the final day of February, that content is scheduled, it's pre-boosted, it's ready to roll, and then on March 1st, I start building content for April. And this, I promise you, is like the best place you can possibly be in your content marketing efforts. It takes away that constant stress of like, oh my God, what am I gonna post today? And when do I find the time and why is this taking over my life? So what this looks like is that at the start of the quarter, which is exactly what you're doing today, we're naming our monthly themes and our content plans. So coming up with those keystone topic ideas. Plus we've already declared our pillars, our categories and our frequency. So all of those sort of bigger plans for the next at least 90 days are set. And I've got mm, 12 weekly topics ahead of me that I know I can jump off of when I get to the I, C, E, and R. So now it's February week one. I'm gonna ideate. So that means I take that topic idea and I really kind of further flesh it out. So what does this blog post entail? You know, what kind of guest speaker might I, or guest, um, source might I include or stats or whatever it is that I need to, that I need to further, um, build out. I'm going to strategize specific posts for all of those four weeks, ideally the, the keystone pillar posts, but then also some of that filler content too, if I need to. Week two is the big one. This is where we sit down again. And ideally it's like 60 minutes in week one, maybe it's 120 or two two hours in week two, three hours in week three or one hour in week three one hour in week four. So week two, we're crafting it. And that could mean shooting if your keystone topic is a video or um, if it's a blog post, we're writing it. So I'm actually taking the time to flesh out this idea on paper, um, craft the copy, and then try and find the uh, associated graphics or photography to go with it. So it's not an easy one, especially if we're building out, you know, several graphics that are going to accompany that post on our social or in our e-newsletter. Number three, week three, I'm editing. Here's our E. So editing that content with a final spit shine, maybe somebody else is looking at it to you know, make it um, completely legible, shareable, etc. And I'm plugging it into my scheduling tools. I'm doing this with the tier one, tier two, and tier three. So my, my blog is scheduled, ready to go. The e-newsletter that I spun out of it is ready to go and scheduled. My social posts that I further spun out and repurposed are also scheduled and ready to roll out for the month of March. And then the reach, resonance, and return. This is uh, week four, as well as the repeat. But the idea here is, could we go into our scheduling tools, like Facebook Content Studio that I'm gonna show you, and could we pre-boost with five or $10 some of those social posts so that the moment they hit um, the newsfeed and the algorithm gets wind of them, there's money behind them and they're getting further boosted or, or hopefully uh, shown to the audience that they're intended for. So really important there. Beyond that, we're measuring the return of the month prior. We're setting up new ideas to see how the, the, well, the current month performed and what we need to adjust in March as we build content for April. So just paying attention to the stats that month and a little bit of our advertising strategy and we're ending the month on a really strategic high. That is the nicer method, one month in advance. And it's laid out, I've just put this here because you're gonna see this column in a minute when we're in the planning tool. And um, you can adjust this however you want. But idea, ideally with our batch creation, we can turn to this as a reference to remind ourselves what content stage we're at and to tag our little content post um, or our, our pillar topic accordingly within the planning tool, as you'll see. So a little bit more on this, just as a recap, week zero, we'll call it. That's that start of the quarter. Um, coming up with your, your sales focus, marketing focus, your categories, and then really being clear on what your tier one platforms are, your tier two and your tier three. The monthly content process, so how you're getting it done. Uh, the weekly content frequency, how much, how often, where are you posting? Is it 
five posts on social per month or is it 20 uh, or per week? And then daily content by platform, same thing. Roles, budget, requirements, just basically having another look at your overarching social media plan. Then that week one, so written content, fleshing them out, video content, finalizing scripts or outlines or shooting for the week following, just getting everything ready uh, in the ideate stage so that you can step into week two for that two hour block and create the crap out of that month's content. Um, create and curate. So this is where we're actually writing, shooting, um, sourcing imagery, etc. Gathering assets, resizing, transcribing, doing some editing to get it to a point where for week three, where we're not just completely editing from scratch, but we're just making final tweaks to that script or those captions or whatever it is. And then we're spending the time to automate it. So getting it into the right scheduling tools, properly loading up the imagery or the, the graphics, filling in the gaps, um, putting it into our e-newsletter tool and scheduling it with the right banner or the right images. And then week four, reach and return. So that's, as I mentioned, pre-boosting, optimizing, adjusting, adjusting your audiences if needed, um, maybe running your ad campaigns or getting those going each month and then analyzing and adjusting your content for the week ahead, the month ahead as needed. So in the process game, consistency is more important than frequency in the content game in general. And that 50, 50 rule, if we can aim for 50% of our content across all platforms, tier one, tier two, and tier three to be based in our keystone topic idea, that pillar topic. And then the other content, the 50% is filler. So I can pull from other pillars. I can keep it kind of live on the fly stuff that's happening in my business, but I can write an additional 10 or 20 social posts that don't relate to that week's topic so that I'm not just talking about one thing all week long. All right. So three exercises here as our final pen to paper activities before we go digital. So your weekly plan, a detailed kind of seven day look at your content. Uh, what you're going to do and how you're going to keep it on track. Then your quarterly plan. So naming your monthly themes and content goals for the three months ahead. And you can use this every quarter if you need to. And then, you know, a snapshot of your month in advance and your month at hand in calendar view. So you can really see where things are going live or where things are getting built. Because of course, we have our month at hand of what's being published from our scheduled content. And then we have our month at hand of what we're building for the month ahead. And we have to pay attention to both. So the detailed weekly post planning to create it in advance for the following time frame. Again, you're committing to what? How many posts per week across which tier one platforms a, and which tier two platforms? And then what primary tier three platforms? So this is just further fleshing out what we did in the last uh, section. And then what go live date and time for your posts each week? If this is the only part you want to do of this because the rest feels redundant, no problem. But for real, like what day does your e-newsletter go live? What day does your blog go live? When do you do your Instagram reel each week? Is there a schedule to it? Awesome if there is. So you can schedule as much as possible. And then um, any other platforms as well that you can declare your weekly schedule with. If we go a little bit further out, we're in that quarterly um, view again. So naming your ideas in this N stage, naming. Um, the top three goals and then the content themes and objectives for each of those goals for the next three months. Finally, here we are with our content map that shows the month in advance as well as the month at hand. So I like to see it as like next month's content. So in the gray top bar of each line, I can see that my blog post is going live there, my video is going live there, and maybe I want to reference it further. And then this month's content, I know that every Monday, from 9 to 11 a.m., I block it off for month ahead content creation. Week one, week two, week three, week four. And I don't move that block. It is important if I don't keep it on track before I know it, it's February 26th and I'm just starting to think about March's content. And that's where we get into really ugh, promotional heavy, um, not meaningful, not deep tied to our pillar kind of content. And it gets boring. So thinking further in advance, tying it back to our big milestones and events for the year and creating the rich kind of content that people want to hear from us. 
All right, finally, let's execute all of this with the help of a comprehensive planning tool. So what we call it at Social School is the Content Planner. And it's built in Trello. It's a free template for you to copy and make your own. And I'll show you the link to that in a minute. So what we are looking at here is um, a series of columns and there's a, the first column that says start here has all the instructions you'll need, but I'm going to walk you through it as well. And then you'll find an additional supplementary video guiding you through it in real time in this course. So if we first look at the pillars there in quarter in uh, column number two, that say content pillars, I'm going to edit this to be my own. And I'm going to, of course, pull in the content pillars that I identified as mine. Maybe though, in the content pillars that have a quarter attached to them, so Q1 2021 or 2023 or whatever you're at, um, you're naming that pillars um, theme if, if you've developed your pillars to work really well in each quarter. So instead of constantly cycling through each pillar, you're like, huh, first quarter of the year, we want to really focus on educational content. Second quarter of the year, we really want it to be aspirational. Third quarter, really, really inspiring or whatever you want, entertaining. Fourth quarter, it's all about Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Christmas, whatever. So we can really layer in our promotional content. Totally up to you if you want to have uh, quarterly pillars or just generic. Um, next up, you're going to declare the categories and that's in that column number two at the bottom, you see content categories, you're going to click on that tab, open it up or that card, open it up and you can edit this or trash the ones that you don't think you're going to use. But from here on each of your content topics in the card, you can say, this is a how to, this is a, did you know, this is a Q and a, the next piece of this is the content stage that we just talked about. So I'm going to, I'm going to further, um, click on those options within the content card, which I'll show you. And I can determine what stage my content piece is at so that every one of my cards that I'm starting to flesh out in this tool will get labeled with the stage that they're at. And then finally I get to, or not quite finally, I get to also say, is it tier one? Is it tier two or is it tier three? So these are the labels that'll show up. Remember, there's a full guided how-to of uh, this tool in action that you get to reference if you need it. And then the weekly topic cards. So where you see um, the card template, it's, it's in column number six and it's green. This is the one you're going to create your 52 topics out of. You simply push create template and our, our copy template, and then you add your own topic in there, and then you pull it into column number seven, eight, nine, or 10 for wherever it fits. Because of course, each of those is a bunch of cards uh, related to the same pillar that we're going to use as our jump off points. So from there, the final piece is just uh, the stages that you're at within each of, um, within each topic. So if it's uh, a blog post, again, on my educational how to, I can say that it's at um, week one, and I've ticked all those checklist boxes, and I'm now into week two. So just a reference uh, there for you of, of your progress as you go with that particular piece of content. So you've got a little bit more here, um, detail and closer up view of what these look like. But the only way to make this your own is to use the tool, dive in and just sort of see how it looks and feels and eliminate anything that you don't feel like is relevant. Hopefully the first column that says start here, as well as our supplementary video will guide you through how to bring it to life. And uh, you'll end up with a really clear picture of what you're doing on your content and you just move it around and you make it your own. We've left this pretty big to say that we're creating one video, one blog, one e-newsletter, and 20 social posts per week. So that's how this tool or this template was built. You're going to want to cut that down significantly or add to it, but that gives you a general idea of what it would look like to create 20 social posts and three pieces of deeper content or four pieces um, each week. So those topics are the most important part of this. If you do nothing else, I would love for you to add 52 or 26, if you can't do a whole year's worth of weekly topic ideas to those template cards. 
And then you can, you know, add in the pillar, pillar category and stage if you want, add in a due date, um, flesh out the topic idea with some key points or the titles or the rough notes. I love to write my blog post in this card. This is where everything lives so that there's not a Word doc somewhere else or a note somewhere else. I open this card, I look at the topic that I'm supposed to write about that week and I just start writing it. And maybe I'm adding to it, you know, in advance of that with certain ideas or sources that I want to reference. But then when it's time to sit down and write that, I write it right here so that I, again, everything is in one spot. What happens is we end up with this. If nothing else, you've got your columns of pillars and then those 10 or 13 topics within each of those. From there, if I added due dates, and maybe I've got extra kind of stuff on the side. You can see column number five for us is filler content. And take note that our pillars are based in some pretty salesy or product forward things. It's not educate, entertain, inspire. It's websites, pillar number one. Two, community for our paid community. Number three, social media marketing. And number four, digital marketing. And the reason I said these could also be attached to a certain quarter is because we run a big website program in Q1. Then we focus on community and, you know, our, our uh, memberships, our paid memberships in Q2. Then we focus on our social media marketing certificate in, in Q3 of that year. And then the digital marketing certificate in Q4. So that's why we're making most of our content in that time around those pillars and then fleshing in the pillar, the filler stuff as we go. That may apply to you. It may not. The idea is that as we add dates to these topic cards, they show up in the calendar view. And I could literally move those around or, or add to them however I wanted, um, but I can see it at a glance in a monthly or weekly view. And it's really helpful for those of us who are very visual and need to see what's happening where and what each weekly theme is and what stage it's at. From here, of course, the final step would be to add all of these topics and this written content to our automation tools. Whether that's our blog, we're gonna schedule it, or it's our e-newsletter and we're gonna schedule that, or our social media automation platforms, which will show you our favorites in module number three. Now, if that was way too overwhelming, that content planning tool is like, Kelly, you've lost me and now I'm annoyed. I totally get it. A simpler version we're gonna provide for you as well, and it's just called the Blog Planner. We sell it in our template shop, but it's yours for free. As part of this course, you're welcome. And all you're doing is building your keystone topic ideas. So just add in your pillars in those top four columns, or those four columns, and then start to add in some cards with just ideas, 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 ideas that you can then maybe put in an order and add some dates to. But now I've taken those those topics, and that's all I'm focused on. Don't worry about the process in this tool. Don't worry about all the different little added pieces. You just want to brainstorm, and that's what the blog planner, a simpler version of this, is, a, is designed to achieve. So add your pillars, add your categories, and then add some topics. So you can access the content planner from Social School right here. You're gonna click the link. Um, in this video and uh, you can also access, oh, there it is, but it's not showing up very well for you. There we go. The blog planner and then uh, the content planner. So both are available to you and you're gonna be able to see it in real time. If I was to uh, open the card, create the card from the template, I can now make it my own. Oh, you can't really see this very well. Let me just add this, here we go. So I'm just gonna change this up to my brilliant idea for a weekly topic. And I'm gonna say it's part of pillar one, which is educate. And then I'm gonna move it into that pillar, but it's gonna have more than that too, like dates, checklists, deadlines, all of that. Okay, so um, you can access the blog planner and the content planner. The two of them are yours. Just look for the links in this module or in this course. And the final piece of this module, I promise, is hooks and headlines. So this I love because it 
is just a fun thing to talk about and it goes back to my days in the newsroom and especially working for news editors, writers, uh, you know, just publishers that were really clever in capturing an audience's attention in like two lines, two words sometimes. And this is what we're doing with our blog post titles, our e-newsletter subject lines, and of course, every one of our content captions. So really important to practice this and just start writing headlines um, and posts that are gonna get people stopped in their tracks. Exactly the right kind of length, at the right time, using the right tone, talking to the right people, we know all this. So hooking our audience however we can. The right words can move mountains, I love this. Uh, words that move us, connect us, they compel us into action with CPR, clarity, personality and resonance. And the personality piece, is it human? Is it relatable? Is it building people's trust in you? And then is it the hallelujah, I've been looking for this? That is resonance, something that's gonna be shared, something that feels like relief, something that hits someone and they're like, oh my God, where has this been all my life? This is exactly what I've been looking for. That is the best feeling to instill in someone. Because not only are you solving their problems, but you're probably increasing your chances of getting them to buy right then and there. Not bookmark it, not swear they're gonna come back to it, which they won't, but buying right then and there on first glance and first sight. Uh, headlines. So there's a few types that we can generalize or, or lump some of these, these uh, headlines and titles into. The first one is social proof. So this would be the referral headline. For example, why thousands of Albertans will gather in Fort McMurray on July 1st, or see the face cream that blew up the internet. In, in a sense, we're saying other people like it and so should you, or these people are showing that they're doing this and this is why you should be interested. Social proof. Next up is the threat headline, AKA instilling a bit of fear or even just some scarcity or timeliness. Uh, the big lie hiding in your apartment rental contract. Like that's curiosity building right there. Even if it's a bit of a, a threat or clickbaity. Well, okay, but it's interesting. And if you deliver on the content, I'm going to be really pleased. <laughs> um, warning, don't buy another ounce of dog food until you read this. We've all seen those and we know they work. And then the gain headline on the, on the flip side of that, which can be really powerful as well. The promise headline. If you can write these well, oh my God, you're laughing. Ready for quiet, well-behaved kids? Yeah. Where? How? Show me more. Uh, give me 10 minutes and you'll be a master at tuning your guitar. So really great practice to try and write within some of those parameters and hopefully find a way to punch up some of your titles. Email subject lines are huge. The open rates are absolutely attributed to what you say in that subject line. Of course, other, I just see your company name and your subject line and sometimes a little preview text in there. But if that's not compelling, I am absolutely not clicking. And we really want the same to happen on our social posts. So how do we drive action like opens, clicks, you know, further reads or engagement? Maybe adding the words how to, even if that seems a bit obvious. Uh, communicate time and create urgency. We all know that if something's gonna run out or if it's now, um, then that's really important. Add curiosity and delight. What is it that's going to make someone feel so intrigued by what you're saying? that they open that email or read that blog post. Social style guides. So what is it that you and your business know to be, you know, effective and appropriate for you to be posting or um, styling your content with? These are formatting, tagging, language. Are you using acronyms like LOL or in case you missed it? Or, or is that a total no-no? Are you using hashtags? You don't have to. They can be really powerful for social search, um, but they can also be a little bit overdone. So just really understanding what works for your business and your people and, and thinking about how you can craft that into a little bit of a guide. We so often see brand guidelines with color palettes and you know fonts and hex codes, but we don't see social style guides that say, yeah, we say that, no, we don't, here's where we capitalize, here's where we don't, um, et cetera. And then campaigns. Now this is just a way for us to think about things on a higher level as we end this module and think about those jump off points that make things that much more interesting. So yes, we've got our day-to-day -day content, 
And yes, it ticks the boxes of, you know, pillars and categories and unique content types and keystone uh, content and then our process for bringing it together. But what about those really unique things every quarter or every year that make it super memorable for people to, you know, engage with us? And there's no shortage of campaign ideas and accolades out there. I love at the end of the year, you know, we see these tons of roundup articles that describe the 10 best social media marketing campaigns or Super Bowl ads or, you know, back to school um, e-newsletters, whatever it is. But people are thinking about it in advance. People, I mean, marketers and business owners, they're working back from the launch date and they're creating these multi-platform campaigns that go beyond just the regular day-to-day posts and regular keystone content. They're deeper, they can weave through a series of weeks or months, they can be resurfaced every year, but they're something that you've just done a little bit of extra planning for. So can you determine three, maybe even above and beyond annual events or seasons that are important to your customer? Do that work back schedule using that spreadsheet I showed you or some other tool that you've got and find inspiration on the most clever type of campaign you can. So, you know, looking to things in your industry or outside of it, looking to the usual national holidays and and seasons or one that you manufacture, there is no success like those that, um, you know, take a product or service like a, I don't know, someone's life jacket and they turn it into life jacket awareness week and suddenly everybody's talking about, you know, water safety, but this life jacket company is completely involved. Or when I was a journalist, I wrote for a solid eight months straight about the Trident Splash National Cannonball Championships, which I entered in. And I went to Toronto and competed at the Beaches Outdoor Pool. And I came second. It was the National Female Cannonball Champion next to this 350-pound man named Brian. It had Trident Splash written all over it. But as a journalist, there's no way I was going to write about a certain type of gum. But when they created the National Cannonball Championships around it with the gum at the forefront... Man, did they get a lot of press. We were all over the news and we had something so fun to talk about for weeks on end. (laughs) So where can you, you know, cleverly brainstorm some ideas and come up with um, something that really works? So a couple case studies here. A product launch that IHOP did. So they announced that IHOP was changing its name to IHOB and when viewers, uh, they were asked to guess what the B stood for. Um, and it was really fun to see who, um, well, what people came up with and why they did it the way they did. So I encourage you to check that out if you're interested. Brand awareness for the, the, um, natural mineral water, Jana. They launched a new campaign called Deep and they, they partnered with one of the best free divers in the world and they did a really beautiful campaign that just like took over their feeds and showed all sorts of, um, really neat kind of pieces of their product, but more so, um, ocean awareness and free diving and all the rest of it. It was, it was really cool. Um, Gillette, obviously the controversial ads that they created a uh, few years ago around the best men can be. And this was in response to the Me Too movement and it got people talking. There was some pushback and there was some controversy, but on the whole, wow, did they ever embrace that conversation, draw a line in the sand and say, here's where we stand and here's who we are. And on the whole, I would argue that they came out ahead as a result. So I'll see you in the final module. I hope that um, gave you some great fodder as well as some resources that you can use going forward, however you see fit. And of course, um, we have added videos to help you implement and um, customize those to make them your own. I will see you in module three and we'll hit it home with a final bit of process and then software automation tools.